I promise this is interesting. All right, so I wanna talk about video game packaging. I like playing video games. Some would say a bit too much, but that's beside the point. Second to playing video games, I enjoy looking at them, and there's only one thing that separates looking at a collection of modern video games from something you would find on a computer desk in the 2000s, and that's the packaging. Like any good product, you need something to sell the game in. There are lots of benefits to packaging a video game from both the seller's point of view and the consumer's point of view. If you were trying to sell a game, the packaging can help advertise and tell more about what the game is about, as well as it helps it stand out among the rest of the games with a unique box art. And from the buyer's side of things, you get a case that lets you store your game with the accompanying materials like the manual, as well as the added benefit of protecting your game over time. And so, with game packaging being such a win-win for both retailers and consumers, it's needless to say that video game packaging is as old as the medium itself, is what I would say if Magnavox didn't mess it up right out the gate. Just the cartridge out in the elements with no labeling or identifying characteristics, let alone any packaging for them. All you get is a number, which, to be fair, saying you own literally the first home console video game and it just being one would be really cool. Thankfully, everything else going forward has had some sort of packaging for its games. Do you like boxes? I like boxes. But do you know who doesn't like boxes? The original owner of these. Yeah, so the first commonplace packaging found for video games was thin cardboard boxes, and it wasn't entirely clear to everyone at the time that this was something you should keep. And I can't really blame anyone for throwing these boxes away. Not only are the cartridges sturdy enough to store on their own without a case, but even stepping away from retro consoles, I've thrown away my fair share of video game boxes. To this day, I regret throwing away the box that bundled Pokemon Let's Go Eevee with the Pokeball Plus controller. You may be asking, how much do I regret throwing that box away? A couple hundred dollars much? Now, if you really need your cartridge games to have a form of packaging, but you can't find any with the box, you can always just treat the cartridge shell as the packaging. It's honestly not much different of an experience. You just open them up, pop the game in the console like normal, and boom! Problem solved. Boxes clearly had their problems. People threw them away, they were flimsy and prone to being destroyed, and just overall not the best solution for long-term storage. Unfortunately, Nintendo stuck with cardboard boxes for packaging their video games all the way up through the Nintendo 64, which by that time it was bad enough they were even still using cartridges, let alone selling them in boxes. Sega came up with the durable plastic cases for their games way back on the Master System over 10 years before the Nintendo 64 launched. Sure, the Master System cases may reek of engineering graph paper, but hey, it was a start. When the PlayStation came along, they opted to use jewel cases for their games, which I love and hate these. I like how different from other video game packaging they are, and by using a jewel case, they were able to use the front cover of the manual as the box art for the case. Also, since both sides of the cases have the same spine art, there's no real wrong way to put a PS1 game on a shelf, which normally wouldn't be an issue for most people. I said most people. If I have any complaint about PS1 game cases, it's just how small they actually are. If you've ever tried to browse through a shelf of PS1 games, it can be a bit of a pain to pick out an individual video game unless you get in real close, but this is more of a nitpick if anything, and I'm not against smaller game cases either. The Nintendo DS and PS Vita have small cases for example, but they're perfectly fine when lined up because the spine is just thick enough to properly display a title. Which, while on that point, all the handheld consoles package their games in boxes up until the DS, but one unique packaging solution was the Sega Game Gear. That would have a box with the game and manual inside, but also a plastic shell to house the game cartridge. Unfortunately, this may have had the unforeseen consequence of encouraging people to throw the boxes away since there was that plastic shell to be there afterwards to protect the game. And while it wasn't packaged with any plastic shells like the Game Gear, luck may have been on your side if you owned a Game Boy Advance and threw your boxes away. If you upgraded to a DS, not only could you still play your GBA games with that system, but the cases were now plastic and even have a spot to hold your Game Boy Advance games. A lot of people have started to print off custom box arts and use DS game cases to store their Game Boy games, which, because of this, that means the Nintendo DS game packaging is more or less multi-purpose. 
There were a few other consoles to have cases with the ability to hold more than just a game and manual. GameCube and PS2 cases had a spot to store memory cards. These were more of a relic of the time. Modern consoles obviously have their storage built into the console, so there's no need to have cases that can hold memory cards. But for back then, this would be really handy to have a memory card stored with your games if it wasn't just plugged into the console itself. But I don't want something useful. I want a hunk of plastic that, if anything, makes me question if it's worth keeping. Ah, oh, much better. We've come a long way in terms of standardizing video game packaging. We started with literally nothing, went to boxes, and then started to introduce and experiment with plastic hard shell cases. And finally we ended up on DVD and Blu-ray cases. Perfectly fine evolution of product design. So then why do some consoles have to go and just mess things up? The Xbox One is easily the worst offender of just taking what works and absolutely sh the bed with it. I want to know who exactly it was that decided to switch the case around and have the game disc on the left side and the manual on the right. This is like putting milk before your cereal. Sure, it works, but you definitely didn't have to do that. The Xbox and Xbox 360 had it correct, so why just all of a sudden change it? I'd be less upset about this thing that barely affects me if I were able to just flip the case upside down and switch it, but they had to pull a PlayStation 3 and mold the branding to the top plastic of the case. The terrible cherry on top of all of this is that these cases have carried over to the Xbox Series X too, so there's no sign of this changing anytime soon. These Xbox cases just feel flimsy too. I don't really know how to describe it, but compared to a PS4 and PS5 game case, and heck, even the Nintendo Switch game cases, the Xbox One and Series X cases are a lot cheaper feeling. They bend and flex more, and the plastic is not a smooth and glossy feeling. It's more of a rough, not so nice feeling plastic. I will give Microsoft this, however. The translucent green cases are really nice across all generations of Xbox, and help unmistakably identify any game as an Xbox game. I'd even go as far as to say it influenced the blue of PlayStation cases. It could have also come from the way Blu-ray cases look, but I wouldn't doubt if Xbox's green was somewhat of an influence. But while I may have just dogged on Xbox for their modern cases, that doesn't mean everyone else is safe. The whole thing that even got me started thinking about video game packaging was the GameCube cases. I don't know why they are so subtly different from a normal DVD style case. Obviously the discs are a different size so they need to be able to accommodate for that, but that's not what I'm talking about. Have you ever paid attention to the way it clicks shut? There's these big blocks that are interlocking and fit together. It's kind of hard to describe, but I don't think I've ever seen a case close like this. It was clearly a deliberate choice, but surely it would cost more per case to mold this mechanism compared to just a traditional DVD case at the time. Now, for Sony's game packaging crime, all I have to say is, PlayStation 3, more like PlayStation, there's three different case designs. Yeah. Okay, I lied. I do have more to say, but not much since the point is pretty apparent. You go from having literally Spider-Man font, to the iconic black PS3 header and design, to then mimicking the PS4 box covers? It's really strange and I don't entirely know why they went through that last revision. Thankfully not a whole lot of games used this though, so it's kind of avoidable. And if anything, this was all indicative of just the life cycle of that console and Sony going forward. Up until now, I've only been talking about traditional game packaging. Boxes and cases, cardboard and plastic, but what about the weird stuff? Well, we have boxes again. Just because the industry standard shifted towards DVD style cases for video games doesn't mean boxes were entirely phased out. Oftentimes you will see game publishers bundle extra accessories that are required with the game in a box. For example, you draw studio. The game requires a drawing tablet. See, this is it right here on the front of the box. It would be weird to sell or package these two pieces separately, so just bundle the game and the tablet into a box and it's that simple. Another box I've seen a lot is for EA's Active Personal Trainer. This is a workout program that bundles a bunch of straps and resistant bands with the game, so a box is needed to keep it all together. 
And this is something game publishers are still doing in the modern console generations. It's very similar to the physical release of Nintendo Switch Sports that was bundled with a leg strap. See, it says it right here on the box again. Nintendo Switch Sports box feels pretty underwhelming in my opinion, especially compared to what's come before it. I would almost consider it a waste of packaging because you open it up and it's just the game and the leg strap in there. Not even a little divider to section off the game from the leg strap, they just both sit right inside the box and there's a ton of empty space in there. But I'm a sucker for these box games. I don't exactly know what it is, but I just love when a game has a big box with it. Sega somehow found out about my weakness and has a few games with special packaging themselves, it just gets me every time. For some of their special releases, they do this cardboard sleeve that goes around the game and it also holds an art book. And I really like these releases. It does bother me that the red for the Nintendo Switch releases don't match, the Sega logo is oriented differently, and they're just much longer than the rest of a normal Switch cases to accommodate for the art book, but hey, just like the PS1 cases, you can put them on the shelf without worrying about the spine not showing. I may nitpick these releases, but hey, at least they have a purpose with the sleeve. Some games just have a sleeve around the plastic case. Usually this is just to add some sort of texture to the game's box art, but at that point I'd rather just have the normal case without the cardboard sleeve. And speaking of sleeves, yeah, some Wii games came with these little paper sleeves, most notably Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort, and Link's Crossbow Training. There are a ton more of these, probably more than you would even think, but it's all the same little sleeves with a game disc and a manual. Honestly, it works really well, especially for packaging these games in with either a console or a peripheral, rather than just having the big standard Wii game cases. But to truly get into the weird stuff, or more accurately, the gray area, what about these? There are games inside, so do these count as video game packages? If so, then any plug and play or multi-game console counts as video game packaging, but I could totally see why someone wouldn't count this because then you'd have to count a console as a video game packaging if it has any digital games downloaded to it, or even an SD card or storage device. And that just doesn't seem right, but does, does this count as video game packaging? My PS4 came with Red Dead Redemption 2 in the same box, if you just think of it as really overpaying MSRP for Red Dead 2 and it just happened to have a PS4 in the same box, this could be considered game packaging. And with that logic you could consider any game console to be bundled with a game physically as video game packaging, and once again that just doesn't seem right. You can do a quick search to look up weird game packaging and find a few funny oddities like the original Prince of Persia box, the Ultrabots PC box, and the Spectre box, but I think I may have one of the strangest and undisputably unconventional forms of video game packaging. It says the game's included in here and you can kinda see it, so why not? This is video game packaging, and I love it, especially since I have two. 